It's lilac season and my shrub border is just full of flowers. I grow about 15 different types of lilacs and this is one of my favorite. It's a fairly small flower but it produces so many blooms every year and is quite fragrant. It just smells so lovely. You might have tried cutting some of these lilacs and bringing them into the house and you would have seen that they droop really quickly. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to cut lilacs so they last longer in the house. So I'm going to split the video into two parts. The first part, I'm going to do a little experiment to see which way you should cut the ends of the stems. There are four different recommended ways of doing this and I want to see which one actually works the best. In the second half of the video, I'm going to discuss other things you can do to make the flowers last longer. If you want to skip ahead to that section, I'll put a timestamp on the screen. Now before I get going, you might have noticed here that there's a lot of brown stuff on here. Well, this is last year's seeds. If I had been a little neater, I would have come along here after flowering and cut all of these off. That way you wouldn't see them at this time of the year. But because I have so many shrubs, I usually don't bother with that. It doesn't seem to affect flowering at all. It's mostly an aesthetic thing. All right, now let's talk about cutting some of these flower heads. I'm going to cut flowers from three different shrubs and compare three different ways to treat the stem. So let me collect those and then we'll have a close-up look at how I treat the stems. I started out with a pail of cold water. And as soon as I took the cuttings, I put them right into the water. You don't want air being sucked into that stem. There are four recommended ways to cut the ends of these stems. One is to make a slanted cut. The idea is that you're exposing more stem and so more water will go into the stem and it will droop less. But the physics of that are just wrong. You can test that for yourself. Just take a drinking straw, cut the bottom on a slant and see if you can suck up more water. It just doesn't work. So I'm gonna compare three of the methods. One is a straight cut at the bottom. The second one is a slit up with a twist. And the third one is to mash the end of the stem. So let's have a look at how that's done. I've collected three different types of lilacs and I'm going to treat the end of each type in one of the three ways. Take off all the leaves because the leaves will take up a lot of the water that you really want to go into the flowers. So method one is just a straight cut, which I already have. Method two is that you make a slit up the stem. And you take one side and you twist it up. So the idea is to expose a large amount of stem. The third method is to mash up the end of the stem. Now I'll go ahead and do that with the other two types of lilacs. Then I'll take them in the house, put them in some water, and wait to see what happens. It's now been 24 hours since we collected the lilacs. From left to right, straight cut, slid up the middle with a twist and a mashed stem. All three of them are in pretty good shape. They're not really droopy. The flowers are still open. Out of the three of them, the crushed stem might be slightly fresher looking than the other two, but there really isn't a lot of difference between the three. When I compare the white ones, I really don't see much difference between the three cuts. They're all in pretty good shape. They're not drooping too badly. Most of the flowers are still nice and fresh. After 24 hours, I don't think the way we cut the stem has made a difference. These cuttings are from the bush I was standing beside. And if I look at the droopiness of the flowers, there's very little difference between them. They're all in pretty good shape. What's happened with this one is that a lot of the florets have fallen off. 
Even when I picked this, you could see that this lilac was already getting old. And that seems to have a big effect on how long they last in the house. As far as the cut stem goes, I don't think there's any difference between these three. It's now been 48 hours since I collected the lilacs. They're still pretty firm. All three of them are holding up fairly well. The one with the smashed stem seems to be doing the best. The other two have lost more florets near the bottom, but that could be because they're slightly older flowers. But as far as the stiffness goes and the droopiness goes, the three are about the same. These are the fresher white ones. Again, they're holding up pretty good. None of them really droopy. Some of the lower florets are old and falling off and getting brown. The tip of them is a little nicer looking. But as far as droopiness goes, I would say all three different types of cut stems are the same. This is the lilac I was standing in front. Again, I don't see much droopiness in any of the three. But this lilac was a bit older than the others, and you can see that most of the florets have now fallen off. It's day three, and the lilacs are pretty much toast. And this white one, the one that lasted the best, is probably the straight cut. And the dark colored one, the mash stem is probably the best. And in this other one, I don't really think it made much difference. Either the mash stem or the straight cut. My conclusion is that it really doesn't matter how you cut the bottom of the stem. There are other things though that make a big difference on how long these last in water. Now let me go over those for you. In this second part of the video, I'm gonna take you through the garden and show you some of my shrubs. But as I do that, I'm also going to give you six tips for cutting your lilacs so they last longer once you bring them in the home. When you go out to get your lilacs, take a pail of water with you. Ideally, the water should be nice and cold. When you cut the lilacs, you want to put them right into the water as soon as you make each cut. The best time to collect your lilacs is first thing in the morning. The lilacs have cooled down overnight. They've absorbed lots of water. The flowers are full of water first thing in the morning before the sun can hit them. When you're looking for blooms to cut, try to pick the lilacs when about three quarters of the blooms are open. The tip of each flower cluster should still have closed buds, but the flowers towards the bottom of the stem will be fully open. Now the reason for doing this is that lilacs don't really open anymore once they're cut. But if you wait until all the flowers are open, the ones at the bottom are getting too old and they'll drop off. The stem is also kind of exhausted by that point, and so it tends to droop more. As soon as you cut that stem, cut off all the leaves. The reason for this is that the leaves lose water. So now that little stem has to not only supply water for the leaves, but also the flowers, which means the flowers don't last as long and the stem will droop more. So get rid of all those leaves. If you want leaves in your bouquet, then cut some extra stems just for the leaves and cut any flowers off of those. Now that you've got your flowers in the pail, put it aside for a couple hours. Let those stems suck up as much water as possible. The last step is to recut the stem. Now a lot of people recut these underwater. That's probably not necessary, but try and take a stem out of your pail, cut it and stick it right into the vase. If you do that quickly, you don't really have to cut them underwater. And as you've learned in this video, how you cut that stem doesn't really make any difference. You might as well just make a straight cut at the bottom. That's the easiest. And that stem of flowers will last just as long as any other cut you make. If you follow these stems, you'll have lilacs that last longer in the house. And you should be able to get three to four days out of a cut stem. I hope you enjoy your lilacs as much as I do. Have a great time in the garden.